This video is going to show you how to tether your rooted Samsung Galaxy S3 to a computer, Xbox 360, another Android device, or anything that can accept wireless connections. There's a couple different ways you can do this. If you're not signed into your Google account, you're not going to be able to access the Play Store and download it, which is an option and I'll show that in a second. What I recommend doing is opening up a web browser. Any browser that can access the internet work just fine. We're going to go to Google and we're going to type in Wi-Fi tether. Then we're just going to press this little downloads button. If you press this, I don't recommend doing it because then you'll have to go looking for it. Click downloads. The very latest one will always be at the top. If you're having issues with it, then definitely make sure you try a different one. But I usually recommend downloading the latest one. And then you click this little link right here and it starts downloading it. Now you're going to want to make sure you have unknown sources checked. How you do that is go to menu, settings, Go down here to security and then go to unknown sources. At first that will be unchecked. Just check it and press OK. If you don't have it checked, then it will warn you when you press on it. It will say go to your settings and then press back, go back to your downloads, etc. Press install. And then you can open it if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the other way. As of right now in the last few months, you've been able to go to the Google Play Store and type in Wi-Fi tether and then the first thing you'll see is Wi-Fi tether for root users now I just downloaded it and installed it manually but if you'd rather just go to the Google Play Store or download it from there that'll ensure that you have the latest version and then you can just press install accept and download and as soon as it's done it'll pop this up and you can press open just ignore this unless you want to donate money press menu settings device profile. One thing that's pretty cool is they updated it finally to support the Nexus S 4G. This device right here running Slim Jelly Bean and you scroll all the way down until you see Samsung Galaxy S3. Just press on it and I don't change any of these for the SSID. I'm going to change this to what would Josh do. My home network is actually DEW so that's why I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. For channel, I yeah, it's up to you. You can leave it stock, whatever. I'm going to choose channel 4. Well, I guess 5 then. Enable access control. I highly recommend checking on that because if you don't want to have a code or you've got to type it in to connect to your phone, if you enable access control, anybody can connect to your device and a little thing will pop up and it will be red saying someone's trying to connect to you. And you'll actually have to drag the notification, press on it, and allow them access to your connection, which is pretty cool. One thing I really like is this, idle shutdown. Idle limit, I'm going to make it about 30 minutes. Basically this means that whenever something hasn't asked for data and it's been idle for the set time frame, it'll turn off Wi-Fi tether so you don't sit there and waste all your freaking battery. There's also other things like keep connection alive and quota, meaning if you have a T-Mobile Galaxy S3 or a Verizon Galaxy S3 and you have only 2 gigs a month or something, you can actually set the quota in megabytes and it won't let it go past that. With Sprint, we have unlimited LTE and 3G, so we don't have to worry about it. As long as you don't go over 5 gigs consecutively each month, then you're okay. For LAN, I like to change it to this one, the first one. And everything else I don't change except the battery temperature. I don't understand Celsius at all, so I'll choose Fahrenheit. Now I'll press start and it should pop up asking for root permissions. Well, it actually has been granted it before, so I uninstalled it before this video, but I guess Super User Elite saved it or something in the history. Alright, so now we're tethering. You can press menu, show log, and if there's no errors, you should be good to go. Now, I've been tethering a lot with this device using a vision tower and getting some pretty impressive speeds. And I'll go ahead and put up a screenshot now. Now, more like one, two, or even three screenshots. I was getting some pretty impressive speeds. One thing that I've noticed, oh, and there it goes, do you want to allow it? It'll ask you when you first start it up and when you stop it. And when a device connects to it and the first time you authorize a device, it'll also ask you to allow it. Now one thing I've noticed is that when I start tethering while I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I've actually had to do it twice in a row. Like start tethering, stop tethering. And while it's on 3G or 4G, press start tethering again. And from here on out, it won't ask you anymore if you want to allow it or not. 
awesome or tethering. Let's go ahead and place this over here for now next to our little cruiser light Android plushie. This is exactly why I choose to record my screen with Camtasia and add my phone as an overlay. You get these really crappy lines and it just looks terrible and unprofessional. But anyways, see this is my home network. I'm going to go ahead and connect to my phone which is an unsecure network. Press connect. Now you can choose a WEP and choose a password, but to be completely honest with you, I have backtracked for R2 and I can get past WEP which is a couple clicks. Alright, it says right here, Josh Toshiba. That's my laptop. This device will not be able to get on the internet at all right now. See? We'll press on Twitter. And it will not load. There is no internet at all. Dropbox isn't syncing. Nothing is working. Because we're going to have to drag down this, click on our computer, and then press on it, press allow, and apply. And it, well, it's already granted root permission, but it will ask you for root permissions. If you have the box checked where it saves stuff and remembers it, you should only get a total of three requests for super user. When you first start Wi-Fi Tether for the first time, when you go to access control and allow your first device and press apply, and then when you shut down tethering. Now we press back and the computer can get on the internet just fine. Press on Twitter again. Bam. There we go. Go to YouTube. You see right there that it's tethering just fine. We'll load one of my videos. Samsung Galaxy S3 front facing camera. Oh, sweet. It's going at about 1.4 megabits per second. I'm not pausing or editing right here. Just so you guys can see this, it's loading the video just fine. No pausing, letting it buffer, or anything like that. It is 360p, and if you choose 720p, it'll take a little bit longer, of course. But there you go. We'll go ahead and go to speedtest.net real quick. It came? Sweet. It That's what is that? CDO. Awesome. We'll click on begin test. Well, I actually went to touch it. That's funny. Funny story behind this laptop. A friend had it, and she was using a different charger for it and pushing six amps into what was supposed to be 3.95 amps, and the voltage was wrong too. So the battery wouldn't charge at all no matter how many times you tried. We got pretty good speeds there. We got 1.97 down and 0.55 up. That's not bad at all. Sprint is upgrading towers to vision towers. In vision towers you'll see about 2.2 you know speeds pretty average actually. We'll try that again see if we can actually get past the two. But yeah, I went on Amazon, spent $7.95 on this generic charger for this laptop, and spent $17 on a battery, and now it works. It's like one of the very first dual-core laptops, but hey, it's great because I don't have to carry around my $1,300, 13-pound freaking gaming laptop that I use for video editing. This will work with 4G. When I tethered my Evo 4G LTE to my laptop at the closest McDonald's here in the Kansas City area, I actually got 35 down and like 15 up tethering my phone to my laptop. And I have a video comparing the Evo 3D to the Evo 4G LTE, WiMAX versus LTE, and I was getting some pretty impressive speeds tethering my Evo 4G LTE to my Evo 3D and to my Transformer Prime. So anywhere you go, if you can pick up a 3G signal or 4G signal, you can get on the internet. Even if you don't have 3G, you can use 1X and still tether. But trust me, it is unbelievably slow. YouTube.com slash, we'll go to the Tech Temple. He does Nexus S 4G videos. Look how quickly that pulls up. That is pretty impressive. We'll go to my channel. This is my second channel where I take videos from my phone and upload them directly to my YouTube channel. Just kind of like a second channel with blogs or, you know, just videos I don't feel belong on my main channel and my screen just turned off. But I can still go to XDA and see what the latest posts are. 
And everything works pretty smoothly. I mean, you saw that. The only thing that's going to be kind of slow is downloads. Here we are on Git.cm where they post the latest nightly stuff. And here's the latest CM10 nightly for the Transformer Prime. I'm going to go ahead and copy the MD5. Click on the link. And then with down them all, I can paste the MD5. Choose the MD5 and then press start and you'll get to see the actual transfer rate how fast this will download using 3G. I'm gonna put my phone in the window here in a second and see if I can get 4G for just a second. Transfer rates of about 167, 140, 130. That's not bad at all coming from a phone using 3G. That's not bad at all. I'm actually pretty sure they upgraded the towers in this area for vision towers. I know at Overland Park they have vision towers. And vision towers will give you much improved 3G over old towers. So we're looking at about 13 minutes on 140 megabyte file on average. Look at that. 215, 222, 240, 246. That's pretty freaking impressive and it jumped to 9 minutes. Alright, I'm going to see if I can get this to tether via LTE for just a second. Check it out. We have LTE. That's not to say we'll keep it, and it's still going. Let me do a speed test real quick. Now keep in mind, these freaking windows are terrible because we just moved here and they said they're going to replace them. <whistles> Let's see how fast freaking LTE picks up here. That's not bad at all, considering my phone's in the freaking window. The <laughs> white balance is freaking terrible. Or the exposure, I know, but if I turn it down, it just makes the video much worse. It's so bright outside. See? You can't see it at all. I'll try to just cut the sides out while I'm, while I'm doing the video. Alright, so let's start up tethering while we're still holding this LTE. This is pretty freaking sweet. If my internet goes out, I can just, you know, launch my Wi-Fi tether app, press start tethering. And we're still connected to LTE this whole time. All right, let's go over to the computer. All right, it says we're connected to the... Oh, no, we're connected to the home internet. Let's go back to this one right here and connect to it. Wow, that looks very wavy and bad on my camera. Ugh, that's freaking terrible. Oh, my phone just vibrated in the window. I don't even know if we're still holding LTE, so let's press the start button. Let's see how fast, oh, 815, 880, dude, this whole entire time, we've been holding LTE. This is great. I freaking love this. If my internet goes out, I'll get speeds of one megabit per second transfer, or one megabyte. It's downloading this 145 megabyte ROM, and look how fast that's going. That's probably just as fast as some people's home internet, and judging by the comments I got, that's faster than some people's home internet. What I get here is about 7 megabits per second transfer rate with the connection I have now. Now, I only get like 1.1 up. There we go, man. That's crazy. That is ridiculous. Let's go ahead and pause this. And then do another speed test. I really can't believe I'm still holding LTE. The Galaxy S3 definitely has a better 4G radio than the Evo 4G LTE. I pick up LTE in places I didn't pick it up before. I am in a new area, so... Let's see what these say. The ping's not bad at all. Not bad at all. I've gotten speeds much more impressive than that. Keep in mind, we're probably barely picking up the tower that's like five miles away, I think. I think it's five miles away. I actually figured out exactly where it's at. And if I get enough comments requesting me to make an updated LTE video on the Galaxy S3 to see how fast LTE goes while I'm literally parked, you know, right underneath the tower, let me know. If I get enough comments, I will do it iPod Touch 531 commented on my video. We'll do it one more time and then we'll end this video. One more time. Okay, why is it not that great? Seriously. I mean, that's comparable to WiMAX. Very comparable.
I just, I can't believe I'm at home, at freaking home, and picking up this weak LTE signal. Well, let's see what server we're connected to. Why can't I choose a server? Oh, Wichita. Okay, we're not even in Kansas. We're in Missouri. Over here. Springfield. Aha! We'll do this one. Independence is pretty close. Sometimes it thinks I'm independent, sometimes it thinks I'm in Kansas City. Eh. We're looking at about the same. Okay, that's it. That's I'm done, I promise. This is what we're Josh do. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm pretty sure it's the first video tethering LTE to a laptop. I did it to my Transformer Prime and got 20 megabit per second down, and I'm only getting 8 on average right now. So if you could, please give this video a thumbs up and, you know, share it. If you like this video, or favorite it and your Twitter account is linked to your YouTube, I will get a mention and I'll retweet the first couple people that do it. So, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to my channel and like I said, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm out. Can't freaking believe I have LT at home.